Hello everyone, welcome to AWS Tutorials. Uh, in AWS Tutorials, you can use exercises and workshops to learn about AWS services. And today we are going to talk about uh, one of the new services of Amazon called Amazon AppFlow uh, to transfer data from Salesforce to S3. Uh, the tutorials has uh, its own website called amazon-dozo.com and that website has got many similar workshops and tutorials published which you can use to implement a particular scenario and learn about AWS services. Uh, but today's focus is uh, Amazon AppFlow. So let's talk a bit about this service. As I mentioned earlier, this is a new service from uh, AWS and um, it is an integration service, a managed integration service, uh, and uh, it, it is used to provide integration between uh, SaaS platforms such as Salesforce, Slack, or ServiceNow uh, to the AWS services like Amazon S3 and Redshift. That means you can use, for instance, a Salesforce as a data source at, at one end, and then uh, you can um, migrate the data to um, Amazon S3 bucket uh, into uh, AWS. Uh, this service uh, is designed in such a way that you have to write uh, no code. Uh, and uh, for that, it provides many building transformations, validations, and filtering. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, I will still say that transformation are in early state because there are only a couple of transformations uh, available at this point of time, but I'm sure AWS is going to uh, provide uh, or enrich uh, those transformation in coming days. Uh, for instance, at present, uh, the kind of transformations you can do is that uh, if you want to, to mask a particular column uh, or a data element, if you are moving the data, you can do that. Or you want to mask um, um, a certain part of the data, you can do that as well. Uh, you can truncate your data values, uh, and you can also um, uh, actually merge two fields. So suppose you have got first name and last name and you want to merge both together to uh, get the full name, you can do that kind of transformations as well. In addition to these transformations, it also provides two other features called validation and filtering. Uh, and let's talk about validation first. So validation is that if you are moving data from source to target and you want to validate your source data, uh, for certain correctness. Uh, and, and based on that, you want to take action, you can do that without writing any single line of code. Uh, so for instance, uh, you can check if the record at the source is blank or null, and uh, or not record, the, the field at the source is blank or null, and if that's so, then you can take some action. An action could be that you simply ignore that record, or you terminate the whole data flow. So you can do validations like that. But again, uh, I, I believe that uh, the, the, um, these validations are also at an in, in initial stage because I think there are four types of validations possible at this point of time. But I'm sure uh, those features will be enriched in the coming days. Uh, and then finally, we have filtering available. And, and, and the whole purpose of filtering is that you might want to create some kind of, some 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 set of, conditions to filter down the source data when uh, moving them over through AppFlow. So that's how AppFlow works. And today we are going to use AppFlow to move data from Salesforce to S3. And in course of doing so, so you will find that we will not um, write even a single line of code. Okay, so let's, let's talk about that. So the scenario is that at, at one end we have Salesforce and at other end you have got S3. Well, AppFlow is not the only service you can use in such condition, in such situation. I mean, you might say I want to use Lambda and yeah, you can you can use Lambda which can make an API call to Salesforce and move data to S3. But in this case, again, you have to write code of your own uh, yeah, in the language you want. Um, other option could be using AWS Glue. Uh, Glue can call APIs uh, and you can say that, okay, fair enough, I'm going to use AWS Glue to call Salesforce API and move data to S3. You can do that as well using language like Python or PySpark. Uh, but again, uh, you have to write code in this uh, in that situation. 
uh, and the and the, the the solution we are going to see today is using AppFlow, where we can move the data from Salesforce to S3, uh, and in that uh, doing so, we will use configuration to get the job done. Okay, so where do we run this workshop, uh, this exercise? Uh, this exercise is available uh, in uh, in our aws-dojo.com website. Uh, there are many similar exercises and workshops available, but we are going to use this particular one today. Uh, the URL of the exercise has been provided in the in the link below, uh, in the in the description box below. Uh, so you can simply follow those instructions, and it it provides very detailed instruction in terms of what to do to get the job done. And when you finish all the instruction, you will have uh, the flow created, which will simply move data from Salesforce to S3 bucket. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show the steps of the exercise uh, uh, in terms of uh, know how to configure uh, the services to uh, to get the job done. So let's move on to the exercise. So this is our awsdozo.com uh, website, which has got many workshops and exercises. And uh, the exercise we are choosing today is transferring data from Salesforce to S3 using AppFlow. So one of the first steps is to is the prerequisite. Uh, and um, uh, the, there are two prerequisites here, actually. Uh, the, the first one is that you, you need to have an AWS account with administrative uh, administrative um, uh, access. And uh, if you have, very good. If you don't, uh, you can actually uh, use the trial version of uh, AWS account and I have provided link for that over here. The second thing is that you need also need to have a Salesforce uh, account with uh, no, available to you. Uh, and uh, when you're using uh, yeah, Salesforce, actually um, uh, API access should be enabled on the Salesforce account. Uh, and the reason being that AppFlow uh, makes API call to Salesforce to transfer the data. So all you need is that your account should have, uh, you should have API access enabled. And I have provided a link over here which talks about this requirement in detail. But for what we have done here in our case is that um, I have gone ahead and created a Salesforce developer edition, a free trial access to a Salesforce developer edition. And I choose developer edition uh, for a simple reason that by default, API access is enabled on uh, the developer edition. So I don't need to do anything once I have uh, my free trial account ready. So the Salesforce here is the free trial developer edition of the Salesforce. And I have provided a link over here, which you can simply uh, click on to see how to create a developer edition uh, trial account. It's pretty simple and straightforward. So uh, I assume that you understand the basic knowledge of Salesforce platform, because that's not something I can cover in a very short time here. Uh, so I'm assuming that you understand how the salesforce.com is structured, how you can have various objects over there and and, and because we are going to choose one of those objects uh, over there to move data uh, of that object to the S3 bucket. So uh, once you have uh, you have made sure that you have got uh, both uh, Salesforce and AWS account uh, with you, uh, you can go ahead and create a S3 bucket as a destination. And in this case, we have chosen uh, Paris as the region because their app flow is available and this is the bucket name we have set up, we have created. It might happen when you do the workshop, this bucket is not available. And if that is the case, you can create a bucket with any other different name um, and, and simply use it uh, in the rest of the steps over here. So once your bucket is created, then you move ahead and configure the app flow uh, you simply click, uh, go to the app flow console, say, hey, I want to create a app flow. You give a nice name to the flow. In this case, I'm giving the name Dojo Flow. Um, then it asks, do you want to encrypt data and so on and so forth? I say, let's keep it simple for now. I, I move to the next steps. We say, okay, tell me the source system. And in this case, we're saying our source system actually is the source Salesforce. So we selected Salesforce as the source system. Then you click on the connect button. 
When you click on the connect button, it asks you that, are you talking to a production environment or sandbox environment? We say, okay, we're talking to a production environment. We give a nice connection name, and then it will ask you for the logon information. So you simply provide your username and password to your Salesforce account, and you log in. And once you log in, it will ask for your, uh, no, your consent that, hey, do you agree that I, no access and manage data on on your behalf using your your credentials because that is the credential it will use to make api call to salesforce to fetch data so it asks it is asking for your confirmation uh, and if you are okay you simply say allow and once you do so actually uh, the connection is created in no time so now Airflow has got a secure connection created with Salesforce, salesforce.com. And then you can see uh, two options available to you. One is called Salesforce object and second is called Salesforce event. So you use Salesforce, Salesforce object if you want to you know, do one type, one time migration kind of thing. So you can say, hey, I'm selecting this object and I'm doing this one-time one migration. So then you go for that, you go for Salesforce object. But you can also do Salesforce event. In case of Salesforce event, what happened is that whenever the objects got changed, actually uh, this flow works. Uh, so that is something which you can use for incremental, incremental uh, no, uh, syncs uh, or incremental data flow. So in this case, we are, uh, so, Basically, you can do both one-time and incremental data um, integration using AppFlow. So what we're going to do here in this case is that we are going for one time because we are running it uh, for the first time and we want to actually manually run it, not wait for event to happen. Uh, so you selected the first option and then it will give you a list of objects which you can uh, sync. So at a time you can sync only one object in a, in a, in a flow. So we said, okay, um, we'll go and sync the contact object over here, but you do have choice to like select any other objects like account or lead or case or contract or anything, any custom object as well. So once your source has been mentioned, which is primarily connections to the Salesforce and then the, then the object you want to uh, migrate data from, then you configure your destination and your destination, since your destination is S3 bucket, in this case, you simply say, hey, this is my S3 bucket where I want to move the data. And this is the same bucket name you created in the earlier step. And then you ask for how do you trigger this uh, particular, uh, this particular um, uh, flow. Uh, and you do have choice to you know, run it on schedule or run it manually or uh, the third option of run on event, which is used Primarily, when you want to um, uh, you want to do incremental change because uh, in that case it runs when the data at the, on the event of data change at the source. So that the third option is is selected in that particular case. So after uh, after after having selected uh, source and destination, now you have to provide the mapping um, and. <clears throat> And this is very interesting one because this is all, so far you have seen, you have not written a single line of code. You're simply using the configuration. So in this particular example, what we are doing is that we are going to simply migrate this five fields, not more than this. So you can you can have dumped entire, entire object. You could have done that. But in this case, to keep it simple, we are saying that we are going to simply migrate last name, first name, title, language, and business phone. These five fields I'm going to migrate. And you say, can you map these directly? In that case, it will simply go, uh, it will create you know, uh, same destination field names doing one-to-one -one mapping. But uh, we are interested in doing some more transformation here. And one of the transformation we'll do is that looking at this business phone, we want to mask some part of the, uh, some part of the data. So for instance, in this case, um, you click on uh, the phone and then say, hey, I want to modify the value. And, and then in that case, uh, it will give you option what kind of modification you want. In this case, you have got two options. One is mask the value, or uh, second is um, you can uh, concatenate the value or short the value. Uh, so we have gone for mask the value, and they say, I want to mask just first you know, uh, eight characters in this case, for instance. Uh, so I, I applied the mask masking. Then I said, okay, let's do some more transformation. So we selected both first name and last name, and then uh, click on this uh, button called add formula. 
and that will say, okay, let's apply formula in those two fields. And right now the only formula available uh, at present is called uh, concatenate, which will simply go and merge two fields into one. Uh, so we are using the first name and last name and merging them together to create uh, a destination field called full name. And so we simply uh, you know, apply this uh, formula over here. And once this formula has been applied, you can see that we have got uh, this first name and last name is not interested anymore because you have got the full name uh, mapped. So we simply go ahead and remove this selected mapping. So you can see here, we, we run some transformation without writing any code. Uh, I won't say that transformation list is very rich at this point of time, but uh, I will say watch out for this space. Uh, it will keep uh, it will keep getting uh, it will keep uh, getting better in the coming days. Then uh, one of the optional thing you can do after you have mapped your fields is run the validations. And you run the validations uh, if you want to check a certain source value to ensure that data is coming in in a quality in a quality way. And one of the things you can do as a part of the check is, for instance, you can say, hey, let me check for the uh, null values into certain fields. And if uh, values are null in for certain fields, then you might decide to either stop the flow. Say you simply say, I'm 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 not interested in migrating data anymore or you can ignore that particular record. So you can make choices like that. So once you have done validation, in this case, we have said we'll not do any validation because I had a trial account and we said, okay, fine. I mean, data seems to be good there. And uh, yeah, that's not, in my opinion, is the most important part. Um, then uh, you go and uh, add the filters. And, and, and filters are interesting because here you can go and apply a filter saying, hey, give me only... Uh, records where the city is a particular city. So you can really apply filter on your source data to, to see what what uh, data, data with what condition you want to ingest or move and rest you want to ignore. So you can, you can, you can decide like that. So you can say in this case, uh, again, we are not applying any filter, but you do have a choice and feel free to apply filter when you run this exercise by your own. And then you go ahead and create your flow. So once you have created the flow, uh, yeah, uh, uh, the, it really takes no time to create the flow. And uh, and once the flow is ready, you simply go and say, I want to run the flow. And, and this is how you, well, uh, uh, there are two other methods to schedule it or run it based on the event. But uh, but for the for the exercise purposes, we are simply uh, not clicking on the run flow button to run it. And when you run it, it, it takes uh, you know, a couple of minutes to finish the execution. But when it finishes the execution, you get a message like this, that, that your run has been successful. And if you go to your S3 bucket, you can really go and see a file where your data has been uh, migrated uh, to the S3 bucket from Salesforce. So this finishes the exercise. Okay. Uh, and uh, the last step is very important where you clean up uh, clean up the environment and um, what you do for the cleanup is first you uh, go ahead and delete uh, those uh, no the bucket the destination bucket you have created uh, and 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 the second one is that you delete the flow and the connection you created with the salesforce and, and once you have removed these two these two these three things then you know that your account has reset to where it was earlier and um, and you will not incur any cost uh, any any further cost post this exercise. So that was uh, all about uh, this exercise that finishes the exercise. Uh, hope you hope you like it um, and uh, you you do it yourself uh, to, to get experience uh, around this particular service. Uh, if you have any uh, comments or feedback, please feel free to provide me uh, in the comment box uh, of the video. Uh, you can also provide me feedback on the uh, AWS Dojo website uh, through the contact us, uh, contact us page. Um, please like the button if you like this particular video uh, and please subscribe to the channel uh, and uh, we'll make sure that we'll keep publishing new content to you in coming days and you help them learn about AWS services. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.